Okay, we're ready to go. Okay. Well, Queensland is reeling this morning from the worst natural disaster in our history and possibly in the history of our nation. As we look across Queensland and see three quarters of our state having experienced the devastation of uh, raging floodwaters, we now face a reconstruction task of post-war proportions. That is how we are seeing it, and that is the sort of steely determination that it will require to overcome what we have seen in the last three weeks. As we uh, all watch with uh, awe at the power of Mother Nature here in Ipswich and in Brisbane, we are also very mindful that in the regions of Queensland, people are still facing rising floodwaters. If I can just take you through what's happening in some other parts of the state first. In Gundawindi, the rivers are continuing to rise. Uh, it is heading, it is a town headed for its record ever flood, and it is likely to peak overnight. We are keeping a very careful watch on the levee banks around Gundawindi. Uh, the water is uh, likely to be very close to those levee bank levels. We are very, very concerned about Gundawindi and throughout the day we'll provide further updates. The town of Condamine is also seeing levels on, in their river continuing to rise. It may not reach quite the peak it did last week, but will be in that vicinity either tomorrow or on the weekend. I'm very pleased that the river levels in all other river systems are, con are now falling, but in Gundawindi and in Condamine we see them rising. In the Toowoomba and Lockyer Valley region, while the, water, while the water has receded, the kind of devastation that it has left I think is only now becoming fully clear to everybody in that valley. This is a valley that has been completely and utterly devastated. There are whole towns that are now unrecognisable. Unfortunately, I can confirm that just this morning we have uh, a further death to add to the toll in the valley. We have a 13th victim has been found in a field near Grantham, uh, and the Deputy Commissioner can make further comment about that uh, a little later. But our condolences go to the family of another victim of the terrible floods in the Lockyer Valley. We also have uh, more than 70 people now notified as missing. With the floods, particularly in and around the Ipswich area, many people were unable to locate friends and loved ones last night and have made uh, reports to the police of missing persons. We hope that throughout the day, as we locate people uh, in evacuation centres and others, uh, some of the informal evacuation centres, if you like, that we will be able to put uh, those people's minds at rest, but we will nevertheless be out looking uh, for all of the people who have been listed as missing. There is now a major search and rescue mission in the Lockyer Valley. It is a mission that is being supplied by the Australian Defence Force, uh, by police, by fire and rescue uh, staff and by emergency workers. In some of the towns that the search and rescue operations are operational in, uh, of course, we are also trying to get utilities reconnected. Can I reassure people in each of these towns that despite the search and rescue efforts, uh, utilities tradespeople will be going in today, they will be given some priority by police, and we'll be looking to have electricity uh, supplied where possible as quickly as we can. Uh, we also continue to see a large number of people in evacuation centre in Gatton who have come out of some of those small towns and they are likely to be there for some time. Sorry, many of them were in the evacuation centre. They're now with friends in or, or family where possible in the Gatton area, but as I said, likely to be out of their homes for some time. We also have some uh, major supply issues in the other parts of Queensland towns like Rockhampton. Uh, where the water is falling, it is not falling at the rate that we had predicted and we're seeing those roads cut for longer than we had hoped. Uh, so it may be well into the weekend or even later before we see the roads into Rockhampton uh, 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 open and we are continuing to provide uh, Australian Defence, use Australian Defence Force uh, planes to take groceries and supplies into those towns north of Rockhampton, supply back into Rocky and supply north. Uh, so that cut in that Pacific, sorry, in the Bruce Highway uh, is causing a great deal of uh, uh, problem and concern with supplies into those parts of Queensland. 
Uh, however, we did have, uh, as I said, planes go into Townsville and to Bundaberg uh, last night and this morning, and they will continue those supplies for as long as possible. Here in the southeast, I think a number of people have woken up uh, to some good news and some relief this morning. But I have to stress that authorities in the southeast are still on full alert. This continues to be a very dangerous situation. We have 118,000 residences without electricity, and the electricity cuts to the CBD uh, means that there are considerable strains on our traffic management system. Traffic management cameras are out around the city. So this is a potentially very dangerous situation across a city the size of Brisbane. And I repeat the warnings we've given. Please, if you don't have to be out there on the roads, don't be. It is a dangerous situation. We also have dangerous fast-moving water going through our rivers and creeks and we need to make sure people stay away from them. But we also know that this morning thousands of people in the southeast, literally thousands, have woken to the unbearable agony of their homes being devastated, their businesses, their workplaces being devastated and for some people they've seen both, their workplace and their homes, washed away. For many others, they may not have water in their backyards, but they've woken to the devastation of parts of their city. I don't think there's any more powerful symbol of uh, the, what's happened to the modern city of Brisbane than the sight of our floating walkway drifting down the Brisbane River this morning. The, the floating walkway is a much-loved part of Brisbane. It is the modern face of a thriving, sophisticated capital city. It's a loss that we will all experience. And there will be other experiences just like it in neighbourhoods where people watch their parks, their swings, their recreational spaces, possibly their schools, all devastated. So there's a lot of grief and there's a lot of pain, uh, not only here in the southeast but in other parts of Queensland today. Here in the southeast, I wanted to acknowledge that overnight we had no emergency rescues. That is a great tribute to the people of this region. I'm very proud of them. They did what we asked. We said, please do sensible, make sensible decisions. Move to higher ground. Don't stay in dangerous situations. And they followed all the warnings. They cooperated with our emergency staff. Uh, and I'm very, very proud of the staff who were out there on the front line last night. We had uh, an enormous army of police, fire and rescue and emergency staff. They were assisted uh, by more than 400 defence personnel uh, right across this region. It was an incredible effort overnight and uh, I'm very grateful to all of uh, the people who heeded our warnings and who helped our emergency staff keep us all safe. As I said, we have uh, some 18, 100, I think it's actually 119,000 homes and businesses without power. There are 37 substations in the CBD uh, that are currently cut. We will this morning start prioritising substations for reconnection. There are some suburbs that were disconnected as a precaution because of the level we thought the water would reach. Those suburbs can be reconnected very quickly and that process is starting this morning, so please be patient as that is rolled out. In other areas, the substations were disconnected and what water did go into them. So there will be some areas that will take some time to reconnect and again I ask for your patience. But I, and I also encourage you to keep listening to news. We will let you know which suburbs are being reconnected uh, over the course of today. But for some suburbs, uh, you may find because other parts of your neighbourhood are seriously flooded, we may not be able to reconnect power for some days. Uh, please listen to the information we're putting out on electricity supply because you may need to make uh, decisions about relocating uh, to friends for a couple of nights if you don't think you're going to have power. We are also working very hard to restore uh, where they've been affected, telecommunications. This has been a particular issue in the Lockyer Valley. In the areas of Gatton, Helladon, Grantham, not only have they had phone lines cut, but they've had uh, mobile phone towers go down. So uh, these are people in desperate, uh, they've in desperate circumstances and they haven't been able to make or receive mobile phone calls. Today we've got temporary mobile phone towers being erected and I hope that that, helps, uh, that assists in ensuring that they don't feel as quite as alone as they might have in the last couple of days. 
When an event like this happens, you see the best come out in people, and we've seen it already on our streets, people out there helping their neighbours, doing everything they can. Uh, and what we're now seeing is an avalanche of people wanting to volunteer for the clean-up, not only here in Brisbane, but across uh, the whole of the, uh, the state. Can I just uh, thank you for the, the calls that you're all making. We are going to need every single person to be part of this, uh, but can I implore, uh, the best way to make use of you is if we do it in an organised way. So can I encourage people to go and register online with Volunteer in Queensland. This is a peak volunteering body. They are expert at making sure uh, that we get the best use out of volunteers. Please go online and register and you will be contacted about the way that we can uh, use you and use your skills. But we'd also encourage people, please help your neighbours, your family and your friends first. If we help the people we know around us, then that will make the task for the authorities that much easier. As I said at the start, we have seen here in our capital city a devastating event. But it is no more devastating than those events that we have seen in towns and cities right across regional Queensland for the last three weeks. I want to reassure regional Queensland that as we go about the business of recovering here in Ipswich and in Brisbane, we will keep the towns and cities of regional Queensland absolutely at the front of our radar. You will not be forgotten. I have tasked up Major General Mick Slater with the task of being out there in every one of the towns affected. He's been out there this week. He'll continue those duties. He is not being used to deal with the immediate circumstances here in Brisbane. His task of recovery and rebuilding is full steam ahead and we are not being diverted from the business of recovering your communities by the issues here in the South East. Can I say to Queenslanders everywhere, uh, wherever you are, uh, if you are, and I, so, many, so many places to list, if you're in central Queensland, if you're in southwest Queensland, if you're in western Queensland, if you're in the Burnett region, the Darling Downs, Toowoomba, the Lockyer Valley, Ipswich or Brisbane, all of those places have been affected by floods. And I say to every one of the people in those areas and to Queenslanders in other parts of the state, as we weep for what we have lost and as we grieve for family and friends and we confront the challenge that is before us, I want us to remember who we are. We are Queenslanders. We're the people that they breed tough north of the border. We're the ones that they knock down and we get up again. I said earlier this week that this weather may break our hearts and it is doing that, but it will not break our will. And in the coming weeks and the coming months, we are going to prove that beyond any doubt. Together, we can pull through this and that's what I'm determined to do and with your help, we can achieve it. Thank you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As the Premier has announced, uh, unfortunately, we've had another confirmed death this morning. And unfortunately, I've got to warn Queensland that we need to brace ourselves for more bad news. Um, certainly, that's because we are now getting emergency services personnel and police into some of the more remote areas of the Lockyer Valley, where we haven't been able to get to until now. Um, I, am, I am sure that uh, we, as we go through this process of meticulously searching uh, the some of the very isolated areas, remote farmhouses, buildings that have been collapsed um, and waterways uh, that unfortunately we will receive more bad news in relation to uh, victims of this very, very tragic event. If there is one message that I would give to Queensland as well, could you please be patient with emergency service personnel? Uh, I have on a number of occasions asked the community, don't go out of your way to go into areas where you are not wanted or needed. Uh, this is going to be a critical issue over the next, particularly over the next 48 hours. So please keep away from those areas. Uh, respect the needs of, of the rest of the community and in particular obey the directions of emergency service personnel, in particular police. They will have very, very good reason to keep you out of areas or to give you directions. Thank you. Um, all I know is that a male a person who is deceased at Grantham. We're hearing reports of uh, a story unfolding of a mass 
grave underneath the Grantham Bridge. Can you update us on that? No, I can't because that's an area that uh, they are going to search today. Access to that area because of the water levels has only just come in the last uh, 12 hours or so. Some of the rescue efforts we've seen, um, as well as um, particularly the tugboat driver who steered the, the river walk away from the bridge, will anybody be recommended for bravery and water? We've got local heroes all across Queensland who have uh, the, the stories that have been coming out of uh, regional towns and cities of people who put their own lives at risk to rescue others. Uh, we've now seen that across uh, the southeast as well. Uh, I think everybody thinks uh, the little tug that could this morning uh, did a remarkable effort, made a remarkable effort. Uh, there's no doubt that, uh, in my mind, that uh, the tug driver saved lives uh, without uh, him steering that. 300 ton piece of concrete away from boats and pontoons we would have seen those de that debris into the river system and possibly into flooded areas so uh, we'll certainly be looking to recognise local heroes out of this event uh, in the little towns and the big towns and cities uh, when, the pr when the time comes uh, but we're certainly uh, very very proud of the people who have been out there, as I said, being the heroes of this event. Premier, is there a risk that with the, sky, the blue sky and the, um, the lower than expected level that people are going to underestimate how bad the situation actually is? We're in a very strange situation here in Brisbane. There are parts of the city uh, which today are seeing blue sky and sunshine for the first time in weeks. Uh, their suburb is completely unaffected uh, and I think uh, they probably feel a bit euphoric this morning. Uh, but that's because they haven't yet gone into those suburbs that have been completely devastated. I think in the days to come, as people get out and start talking to their friends, as they start to be part of the volunteer teams, as they start to actually see and hear some of the stories of the families that have been affected by this, the, 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 I guess the, uh, the reality will start to sink in for everybody. And uh, I'm sorry if I was a little emotional. When the reality sinks in, when you're flying over those homes and you look at those roofs, and I could see hundreds of roofs yesterday, and that's all I could see was their rooftops. And underneath every one of those roofs <coughs> is a family. Underneath every single one of those rooftops is a horror story. Oh. And uh, we're going to see that play out. So I think it is going to take some days for it to totally sink in in Brisbane what has happened to our city. As the water goes down, that floating walkway is only one part of the city that we can tangibly see we've lost. We are going to see damage and destruction in the central business district, in the, in the parks, in the gardens, in the schools and in the neighbourhoods of people we know and love. So it is going to be, I think, a gradual realisation. There's now potentially tens of thousands of people out of homeless. Mm. How, where are you going to put those people? Where are they going to go? That's why I describe our task now as uh, of uh, post-war proportions. Uh, we potentially have thousands of people who will need temporary accommodation. Uh, we, have, uh, we currently have uh, serious and significant issues about water supply uh, and food supply. Can I reassure people? We are being assisted by experts from around Australia, from the Australian Defence Force. We have teams of people now working on every one of these priorities. I think uh, it looks like a mammoth task, and it is, but let's have confidence in the people who have protected us so far, who have shown what they can do in the recovery and uh, uh, clean-up in regional Queensland. Uh, this is a huge job. I don't have all of the details answers right now. What I can tell you is we have dedicated task groups of people working on every one of these questions. Sorry, the one other issue I wanted to repeat from yesterday in relation to water... And I know that it sounds very strange with all of this water around us, but uh, one of the issues that our water supply will face uh, is the, the movement in uh, these floodwaters has created a great deal of turbidity, uh, and that means the water is very dirty. Uh, we are asking people, only use the water that you need at this point, please. Let's remember our water conservation uh, 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 efforts and uh, apply them. We need to make sure we keep our water supplies as much in the... Uh, we need to reserve and conserve as much of the clean water supply we've got at the moment. We do have the Chugan desalination plant activated and that will make a big difference. But if we all conserve water, then we'll all be fine. How are the um, essential uh, services like water treatment plants, the sewage, how are they holding up? Uh, at this stage, uh, um, unless Ian wants to maybe add, I'm not aware of any uh, major issues with sewerage treatment plants, uh, but that's something that I suspect the Brisbane City Council uh, will be assessing and have to report on a little later today. Can you update on some of the, the figures of how many people are expected to be homeless in Brisbane? Because that number has been fluctuating all morning. Okay, just hang on and I'll get you... 
The best estimates from the Brisbane City Council at the moment is that 11,900 homes in Brisbane have experienced flooding across the entire property. Now that means across the footprint of their whole property, so they may be unable to access or it may be above the floorboards or in some cases right up to the roof. A further 14,700 homes have experienced some partial inundation. So we are talking there, you know, numbers close to the 25,000, 30,000 mark. The estimates indicate that about 2,500 commercial businesses have been fully inundated or impacted and a further 2,500 have had some partial impact. Of course, there's also the question of roads being cut off and uh, may be cut off for some time. So there are some people who simply can't get to their homes because they, the roads are, are keeping them out, even though their homes have not been impacted. So uh, there will be some people who will be able to get in in the next couple of days, assess the damage, clean up and get back into their homes within a week. Do you know how many... Uh... There will be others, sorry, I need to... And I think we need to prepare ourselves for this. There will be others who will go into their homes and find that those homes will never be habitable again. And that will require a total rebuilding effort. And for some people, they will have some insurance to cover things like temporary accommodation, but many people will not. So, yes, temporary accommodation, and when I say temporary, it could be for months, will have to be put in place to assist people as they rebuild homes that cannot be lived in ever again. Rebuilding these roads and uh, replacing some of the damage, it, I mean, it could take weeks, if not months. What do you sort of, what are the expectations for downtown Brisbane? Clearly, we will, we, it is simply not possible to restore every road that is cut off in regional Queensland and around the cities of Brisbane and Ipswich. We will have to prioritise major arterial roads that are essential for food supply. We will have to then prioritise within the city major roads for access into the central business district. We need, obviously, to operationalise the CBD as quickly as we can because it really is the nerve centre of managing the rest of this disaster. So we need strategic prioritisation undertaken and that's what we've got people working on right now. But what world level is expected to remain high until the weekend? Are we, are we sort of basically seeing a shutdown of the CBD until maybe next Monday? Any prediction on roads? Certainly. Um, Brisbane is only one aspect of this and it will take some days until that, those water levels drop until we can allow safe access to all of the roads in those major roads around the, the central business district. But you've got to remember that in the Lockyer Valley and in many of those other communities, bridges have been washed out, culverts have gone, and there is going to be a massive reconstruction process necessary to bring our highway system back into uh, full use. Regarding the river wall, what will happen to it now? Will it be rebuilt? And what could have happened had it been loose and <coughs> The river walk that you saw floating down the Brisbane River this morning uh, was a piece of concrete that weighed 300 tonnes. If uh, the tug that was steering it away from the river banks and away from uh, pontoons and other vessels had not been successful, uh, or if it had broken loose without any guidance, you can imagine the kind of damage it might have done uh, into uh, even breaking into parts of the river system. So uh, it was a very lucky save. Um, the question of whether or not it's rebuilt is one that we will have to think about uh, at another time. It is, I think, a very important, powerful sy a symbol of our modern city, but uh, it is not our first priority. The gateway, bridge was closed. This, sorry, the gateway bridge was closed this morning for a time. Were there concerns that there may have been some damage to the bridge? Uh, the gateway bridges were actually closed a number of times overnight because of this situation with the, the walkway. Um, it was prudent to do that, but our engineering experts told us that the uh, gateway bridge, even if it had been hit by that, um, by that projectile, because that's really what it was, um, it wouldn't have damaged the, uh, the infrastructure. There was actually very fine line decisions being made throughout the night. Uh, people had to make decisions calculating the risk of sending uh, experts in. They considered actually using explosives to break up the, the walkway, uh, and they had to weigh the risk of that in fast-moving water uh, against the possibility of this escaping and seriously damaging the gateway bridge. The engineering assessments ultimately indicated that even if it had hit, 
the, gate, the mighty gateways would not have blinked. So in, given that, it, a decision was made not to risk further lives by putting emergency workers in there to use explosives to break up the bridge. Uh, I think ultimately it proved to be the right decision. Um, you said you would task later to um, make sure the regions don't get left behind, and obviously this is us as wide as significant since Monday. Is there a possibility you may need to report uh, to appoint a secondary um, recovery point? Yes, I am thinking of cloning him. <laughs> uh, look, there is no doubt that the task for Major General Mick Slater, the task for all levels of government and the task of recovery has increased exponentially in the last four days. Uh, it doesn't seem that long ago to me that I was standing at a press conference at the end of last week saying the situation was stabilising and we could now put emergency disaster behind us and start the rebuilding effort. Well, one week later, we've, what we've seen is the rebuilding effort has, in fact, uh, more than doubled in its enormity. So, yes, we will have to sit down uh, with the Major General and the relevant uh, government departments and work through what resources we can bring to this effort and what are the resources we need. I've already had a discussion with the Prime Minister who has indicated that if we need additional resources, not only for managing the emergency, but additional resources for the recovery and the rebuilding from the ADF, they will be available. Uh, we have, I have, have to say, and I, I just want to say to Queenslanders, we have been, uh, I've been overwhelmed with people ringing my office offering support. Every government around Australia has offered uh, all the resources that they can spare to assist not only in the clean-up, but expertise, engineers to come up here and check bridges so we can open roads sooner. Uh, you know, those are the sorts of psychologists to help work with uh, people who are in grief. The Prime Minister of New Zealand rang yesterday offering very similar sorts of uh, advice and ass sorry, assistance and expertise. You know, we are not alone in this. We have... Uh, you know, the substantial resources of our nation prepared to come and help us get through this. And we will use those resources. We won't uh, hesitate. Oh, I'm just saying there was a bus flying ahead of you, but how did you feel this morning when you learned the river had peaked uh, to the lower than you've been preparing for? Well, I was very grateful this morning when I heard uh, that it hadn't reached the heights that we had anticipated. Uh, you can see the devastation that has been caused at... 4.6, 4.5 metres. I ask you to consider what would have been out there this morning if it had been another metre higher or even further, which was a possibility earlier this week. So some people, in the, some people around the city have been spared the heartbreaking devastation of losing their homes uh, and, risk, and risk and damage to their uh, lives. But uh, there are many, many, many thousands of people out there who have not been spared. So uh, while some people might this morning be breathing a sigh of relief, I'm not. When you had a couple of weeks ago, uh, it was estimated that about 200,000 people across Queensland had been affected by the floods. Has that figure increased at all? Oh, absolutely. We now have 70 towns and cities across Queensland that have been affected in some way by this flood, either because they've been inundated themselves or they have been cut off from major supply lines and isolated for weeks. Uh, we, now have to, we now have to add in the 2.5 million people who call South East Queensland home to that number. People at the Gold Coast, for example, uh, may not be directly affected by the flood, but any of them that had medical appointments in the CBD, they're cancelled. Any of them that work for corporations affected by this, by this flood will have their lives disrupted. Uh, people from the Sunshine Coast who had surgery scheduled, it's had to be cancelled. These are the sorts of uh, disruptions to lives that are occurring everywhere. I know that people went to friends and family on the Gold, on the gold and Sunshine Coasts. They will be accommodating those friends and family, uh, in some cases, for weeks. So the effects and the, not, the ripple effect of this uh, event cannot be underestimated. Major highways, major rail lines are all cut, and in Rockhampton's case, still cut by air. Uh, here in the southeast, as I've said, while you may not have been flooded in your own house, the dislocation and the disruption across the capital city and the effect of that on the broader region uh, is having a ripple effect which people, I think, are only now starting to understand. When this host visit people in, in Brisbane and Ipswich affected and also um, later in I'm hoping to get out and about today, but that will depend just a little on what... Uh, my first priority is to be absolutely confident that we've got everything happening we need on water uh, and electricity, and that'll be my first priority here this morning. When we've got that bedded down a little more than it is now, then we will be, uh, I'll be hoping to get out and about. 
I don't think anything can really prepare any of us for some of what we might see in the Lockyer Valley. Uh, I've spoken to the Mayor there on a number of occasions uh, and I'm certainly hearing some of the stories that are coming out and uh, I do think that our search and rescue teams have got a very grim task ahead of them today but when these families go about the business of trying to rebuild their towns, uh, they may have to rebuild something completely different to what has just been washed away. So uh, I think we all need to brace ourselves for uh, further difficult news to hear. Now, you said that Gundawindi is under threat as well as Clubmine. Are people being evacuated from those areas and how many homes are under threat right now? Uh, the town of Condamine has been evacuated for the second time in 10 days. Uh, we are not commencing any evacuations in Gundawindi yet, and I don't want any panic in Gundawindi. I'm just trying to be giving. I'm just trying to give the people of Gundawindi as much information as we can, and to let them know that uh, hydrologists are currently working on uh, formulas to give some predictions. Uh, we anticipate. We think. At, sorry, at the moment it's around. The peak is expected to be at 10.7. The levee banks there are 11 metres, uh, but they are refining that prediction because that's not a very big margin of error.